This video, guys, is the two receiver, two tight end portion of the Broncos scheme. And what we're going to do is we're going to come out in Ace Twins, the Pistol Ace Twins, and we're going to come out in the Strong Power. So for those of you guys, guys that have already watched the Bills scheme, you're aware that the Strong Power simply dominates. Um, for whatever reason, I got hit in the backfield right there. Don't know why. Um, but should always do really well with this run. I'm not exactly running with fast backs. Um, but you'll see that you can pretty much get outside with anybody um, for big gains. Uh, and the addition that I talked about in the audibles portion, um, the halfback power O, is a good run because it actually attacks a different area. Um, for those of you that played last year, you are aware that the counters allowed you to cut back up the middle, and that is something this Power O does really well. Um, you can run it to either side, it does not matter. Um, just run it to the weaker side. So you'll see right here, you can still bounce it outside, but it's more so of an inside run than an outside run. This run dominates the quarter formation. You can crib shot runs on quarter by simply running the halfback power up. Now if I want to run to the right, simply motion the receiver over, get that extra blocker, and now you can bounce it out to the right. So definitely a nice run. Um, I really like it. And it sets those two runs pretty much pound the defense. The passing plays, you have smash and PA flanker stretch. Now for smash, there's essentially two setups. You can fade the X receiver, flat route the tight end on the right, and then when you're doing that, you essentially have two reads. Um, well, three. So you're going to look at these two guys right here. You're going to have the flat corner combo on the left, and then you're going to have the running back on the right. So simply right here, flat route got bumped, tight end on the flat wide open. Now if the tight end does not, or if the, excuse me, if the B receiver does not get bumped, as I'll make a little adjustment right here, the corner route should get wide open. So you'll see right here, corner route, let's throw a bullet to the sideline. Now this corner route does go a little bit more upfield, so it's not the greatest, um, it's not like Z-spot, however it is still effective. Um, Anything else, you throw to the running back over here on the right. The flat zone kind of dumbs out and allows you to pick up decent yards. Um, if there's no flat zone, it's just a nice compliment, you know, to have that guy over there. So definitely a guy that I throw to throughout the course of the game quite a bit because most people just ignore that side. Um, then... That corner route, I wanted to focus on really quick, the corner route in a cover two, a lot of people will start running these. What in the world? Uh, they'll start running these for pretty much that one reason, and that is to stop the corner route on the left-hand side. They'll put a purple over there, and then they'll have the flat on the right to stop the running back. Now, what happens, though, as you'll see right here, that little glitchy angled corner route dominates cover two like you don't have to have a streak on that side or anything to pull the zone it's just always wide open versus cover two so it's definitely a nice nice play um, the other setup that I mix in is to simply drag the X receiver and then I'm looking to just pretty much attack the middle of the field uh, once I have my opponents starting to put flats and purples on the outside I sneak that in there um, just to give them something else to think about. The next play is PA Flanker Stretch. So PA Flanker Stretch is a good play. I utilize this mostly to take advantage of man coverage. However, if they are in a zone, um, you simply just want to drag the tight end on the right. And then you pretty much just pick and choose which guy is open. You got three crossing routes. Um, most of the time it's going to be the drag, but 
outside of that, this play is typically my two-man under or man coverage beater. And the reason I say that is because all of the routes will torch man. So there's two setups. Once again, you can either drag the tight end or simply leave him on his out route. If you leave him on the out route, you have the crossing route right there. The post, for whatever reason, I believe just got jammed to all hell. I'm going to look at it real quick. So, yeah, he's just fighting Daryl Rivas all the way downfield. But you'll see right here he gets inside position finally. And you can actually throw this to the inside and pick up a good gain. Um, go ahead, run it one more time, see if I can hit Hilton against Rivas. Block the running back. So, you see that that route gets pretty damn open as soon as he gets off the press. So, it's a nice, definitely a nice play. Um, if you wanted to change up the routes a li little bit, you can drag the X receiver once again and then slant the tight end on the right, block the running back, and now you're essentially just picking and choosing who you want to throw to. Uh, that's the whole. Five, four or five different crossing route people. Uh, very good play. So, audible wise, we'll audible up to pistol ace. I'll go to that first. The main reason I like this is because you can audible directly up to an inside zone. The combination of the strong power, halfback power, and then inside zone is simply retarded in terms of stopping. Um, I haven't played anybody that can even contain all three runs um, so when you start mixing everything in you really are just going to become a giant pain to deal with because these three runs honestly beat everything in the game so not going to focus too heavy on you know telling you and teaching you how to run an inside zone but it's definitely there so anyways back to pistol ace you have the power that can go to either side um, what I like to do on this is I like to just mess with my opponent. So I'll run the runs. Uh, like, if I, for instance, I'll motion my guy all the way to the left, and I'll be running it to the right. This is one of those things that allows me to confuse my opponent, so to speak. Um, you can create the overpowered run to the you know strong side or the weak side with a simple motion. Um, it's not showing it in game, but it is, or excuse me, it's not showing it right now, but it's a good run to mix in. It forces your opponent to really guard it um, and respect the inside. So, passing play wise, you have inside cross. Now, this is a good play. I like to simply block the running back. And you have four routes that beat man coverage. So, we'll audible to two man under. You see, obviously you got the two drag routes. You have the in route right there. That's against Revis. Then you have the post route. That beats pretty much all zone as well. So let me show you that. So you'll see, he got jammed to hell, Jesus. Um, Cromartie just dominated him. I don't even know. That's Andre Johnson. He looks like he does in real life. But let's see. Go ahead and do it again. This I'm going to leave this as a stock cover three. You'll see that you can fit that pass in pretty much every hole in a zone. So you just got to gotta pay attention on where to throw it. It's a nice compliment if people start jumping down on these drag routes. So I'm going to try it again, stop cover three, and I get a bad throw by luck. So not a good not a good start to showing that, but mess around with it in-game, it does work. Corner post, another good little play. I like to streak the tight end on the right, block the running back, and then you have um, the corner flat combo on the left. And you have the streak post on the right. Try it again. And you'll see what should happen is the guy on the right's unbumpable, but you see the separation he gets. Um, 
game's acting a fool right now for this video, but look at the separation and A, the fact that it's not bumpable on either side. So if you play against a two main under type look a lot, it's a good play to use. So you see, it doesn't get bumped off the line and then simply turns one of the best corners, if not the best corner in the game, completely around. Uh, so you can run this to both sides because you can run it flipped your opponent with that and the other reads obviously you got the corner flat on the left side so you'll see Andre Johnson should get open go ahead and see if he does so he was open I just got drilled as I threw it um, instant replay you just throw the corner out to the sideline as soon as they break So he's going to make his break. You throw it right about here. You'll have the easy completion. So up next is going to be PA Power O. And you can do two things. You can either streak the tight end on the left and just hike the ball. So when I do that, I do actually like to cancel the play action um, because you can confuse the defense with, with these passing plays for sure so this is gonna be very similar to our cover two beater that I showed earlier so as soon as they bite down on that the tight end is going to be wide open over here so that little glitchy angled corner dominates it'll also beat man coverage so it's definitely a good play to mix in Verzone, zone the X receivers pretty much always open um, you can also flat route the tight end on the left or in route the tight end on the left. So you'll see something like this. Throw the bullet. You know, very, very, very solid. I like, I like that play a lot. I mix it in pretty frequently. Um, now we'll move on to shotgun ace. Play I believe is called Z dig. Yeah, Z dig. And what you're gonna want to do is you can either streak the wide receiver or you can drag the wide receiver um, pretty much up to you the running back on the left is always going to be open the zones drop back for whatever reason that was a cover three right there so as long as they're not in a cover two you'll pretty much have the running backs on his angle you will have the post on the left versus pretty much every zone as you see right there very good post route Then you have the two in routes. I utilize those mostly versus man coverage. Um, a little audible to. Here's a cover two. But you'll see you can just throw the short in right away as a primary read, similar to how you would do a drag. Uh, and then the other one is, as I mentioned, mostly for man coverage. Go ahead, audible to it. So once again, you got Revis on TY, and Revis actually boxed him right there. Um, that's not the norm. I think it was because he was pressed, so I'm going to go to a defense not pressed and see if I, it will work. Typically, the in, those deep ends are always pretty much open. Um, I'm going to get screamed at right here. Of course I did. Uh, anyways, utilize it in game. Uh, practice mode is acting fucking foolish. But on to the next play is FL Cross. You have this. Simply hike the ball. You got the running back in the flats again. You will also have the drag on the left. The in route on the right. Then this post is just suspect. I don't really throw that. Um, you can motion slant him if you want. So motion him in a few steps, hike the ball, and then just pick and choose one of these short routes. Force your opponent to guard short will allow you to take advantage of them deep afterwards. Um, the corner route, in route combo is essentially there to beat man coverage. Since I am blitzing six here, I'm going to line shift, C, corner route, Torches his guy if you get a halfway decent throw. In route by the tight end will do the same. 
So you'll see the in route. He has inside position. You can throw that in there. Um, as I mentioned, the post route doesn't really get open. Uh, so I would definitely motion slant him. So let's see what else we got. You got PA comebacks. Now on this play, I like to drag the X receiver, motion slant B. And you do have to block the running back. So you'll see right here, you know, motion stepping, you know, a couple yards. Then you essentially, what a great throw. You essentially have high-low reads at pretty much every area of the field. Definitely something to use and mix in. I don't think any of these passing plays are super dominant. Like, you can run every down, but... It, if you mix in the run and you force your opponent to respect the run, these will definitely be open. So there's that again. He dropped it that time, but the, that post gets open quite a bit, and it dominates man coverage as well. So go ahead. We'll go to man coverage. Block the running back. Motion slant B. So, oh, lovely. Um, anyways, go to replay. You'll see the tight end. Down, or tight end just cooks his guy. Pretty much all of them do. All four guys are open right here. So, good play to run if you can get time. Apparently, the Jets are hell. But, up next you have the... Single back big. I've already broke down these two runs. You have PA crossers and Z spot. Um, you want to block the running back on PA crossers. Streak the tight end on the right. Now your read on that is going to be to simply throw that glitchy little crossing route right there. As soon as they bite down on the streak, or they bite up on the streak, you'll be able to throw right underneath them to this crosser right here. If they try, for whatever reason, to manually play that, you will have this guy over here cutting through the zone. So, nice nice play once again. Go ahead, I'll audible to it. Here's verse man coverage. So man coverage, you see that that guy is wide open. Um, he's pretty much going to beat him at all times. And then the other crossing route will be open as well. Go to instant replay. So you'll see he's pretty much boxed until he cuts across the field. Um, and that's when he becomes open. And that is Andre Johnson versus Antonio Cromartie. So if you have a decent receiver, as soon as he makes that initial cut, he's going to be open. So you have the high-low read right there. If they bite down, you can tend to bomb them with the tight end. So outside of that, I'm going to go to instant replay one more time. The tight end that is on that delay route, um, if you wait, he will go to the flats. Um, for whatever reason that time he didn't so good play and it actually flows really well with Z spot so on Z spot you simply want to fade or streak the B receiver in route the, the Y tight end and then you have the essentially the PA end around concept on the right with the dual tight ends so that is that. Then the last formation is going to be single back twin tight end slot. You have the play smash. Now this smash play, you always want to smart route the corner route. For whatever reason, that corner route is so far downfield it is essentially useless. But when you smart route it, it cuts really hard to the sideline. Um, and it actually is a pretty solid route if it's, you know, like a first and 10 scenario. Um, obviously, if it's a second and 20, you don't want to run it. But if you smart route it and it becomes a shallow corner, it is a good one to use. Simply bullet it to the outside and you'll have a nice gain. Um, go to it again. 
So all you're doing is you're fading X, smart routing B. You can block the running back if you want, but otherwise the tight end is on a simple drag route. He's going to be open at all times. You have the deep in route. It's going to be open if versus pretty much everything as long as they don't manually play it. Um, because a lot of people are going to be biting down on the drag. We'll go to two man under really quick so I can show you this. Actually, I'm just going to come out in it since my team's acting crazy. Let's see. So you got single back, twin tight end slots. Um, and as I mentioned, the PAY corner is another play that I use heavy. Um, and it's just because the routes are all really good. But I'm not going to show you PA misdirection. I do not use that anymore. Um, the toss is a toss. When you want to run the toss, flipping it to the left, moving the tight end over to the right, hiking the ball, um, then trying to get to the outside that way. So back to smash. Go to two man under. You'll see that the corner out will get open as well. As I mentioned, fantastic corner route um, if you smart route it. But the thing I really wanted to show was how the in route will get open. So you'll see right here the in route is going to cook his guy every single time. Um, those deep ends are just dominant. Uh, if you guys noticed through PA end around, they are typically always open. Um, and then the fact that this tight end can't be pressed uh, is a just phenomenal way to have people wide open. So definitely a guy to pay attention to when running that play. Up next is going to be the play that I told you about. And on this, you just want to, excuse me, you want to fade the RB. Um, I do cancel my play action in most cases because the pressure is retarded right now. Um, go ahead and I'll run it again. So, fade, block the running back, and then you're going to want to roll out a bit to the right. If that guy is covered, you tend to have the in route coming across. So. Ideally, you want to hit the guys on the right. If it is not there, you have the guys coming across from left to right. But this play is mostly designed for man coverage. Um, versus man coverage, you guys will see that it is pretty much just dominant. The tight end on the, uh, excuse me, on the corner route is pretty much going to always be open if I'm not getting hit. Going to go ahead, we'll slant him this time. Audible to a two man under. So you'll see that. Oh my goodness. I, I'm getting fucking screamed at. But instant replay since I can't actually show it live. Look at that. I just got a gapped. But corner out. He's going to make his break dominate any man coverage. You'll see this deep post is going to pop any man coverage as well and then the in route coming over here as soon as he cuts across uh, the field tends to be open as well so nice nice little play you're attacking all areas of the field with that that is mostly the man beater um, P what the hell PA Denver cross as I just quick hiked myself but let's see so PA Denver Y cross, you're going to block the running back. Um, you can fade him, motion him to the right. And then you essentially have multiple reads if the guy comes off that delay route. If he's hell bent on staying there, then you're just boxed. So. Just slant him, motion him to the right. So, 
God, I'm kind of flustered, I guess, but you'll see that these do get open. They get open pretty frequently, too. So, now I'm dropping passes. But, anyways, man coverage. All of these guys are going to be open. For The tight end should, in theory, go on his delay. So, you'll see. There it is right now. Of course, I just smacked my fucking controller. But, gonna go to instant replay once again. Once it lets me. You'll see that the tight end finally goes off his delay. He's wide open. Um, you can really piss people off if they're in man coverage and you start utilizing this. Because, I mean, the guy that's covering him is blitzing. So, he blitzes in, he goes on his delay, and now he has 30 yards on this sideline with nobody near him. You have the motion slants. This guy is going to be open as well. The post, once again, against Revis, is going to be open. And the guy on the far left is essentially just useless on that fade, but you can drag him as well if you want, so you could do something like this. So the play art would look like that. And you just throw to the, throw to the guy that's open. Um, this video struggled, but the concepts are there. You just gotta make sure you pay attention to them. And once you get used to it, you guys will see how dominant these are. Uh, so, it's good. Really good plays. Um, but you do want to, out of this set, definitely focus on the run more so than the pass. Passing plays are there to complement the run. So that is it for the two receiver, two tight end video. And we'll move on to the three receiver one next.